back at Single Thread Farm, and this is the, what do you call this? This here. is the middle of spring. We are middle of in spring. the middle of spring right now in Sonoma County, really uh, celebrating our peas, our asparaguses, our fresh herbs and lettuces that are all growing out on the farm, out on Dry Creek Road. Uh, we are seeing the beginning of summer stone fruit with the apricots, as well as the last of the winter citruses still. So a see. little bit of, of three seasons all at once. And since we've had some cold, rainy weather, I'm not sure if you've been getting that down in San Jose or yeah, uh, a little bit. More than usual, Yeah, for sure. So we're still seeing a little bit of that winter produce, but really the driving factor is our spring uh, pro bounty produce coming from the farm right now. Okay. The first bite here for you is the shared Salanova salad. It has a duck liver parfait at the base of the bowl, sunflower seed ducka soil sprinkled across the top with hoshigaki persimmon tucked between the leaves. Your other shared bite here in the sunlight, a perfect view of that zushi roll. It has a locally caught halibut coming from our Bodega Bay coastline, lightly pickled daikon radish, and a farm herb pesto rice in the center for you okay then it eight individual bites will follow okay. there are three right in front the white cup tonight is a fresh spring herb panna cotta topped with honey mussel coming from washington and mizuna a japanese green mizuna uh -huh. I'm just going to make one quick switch here. My apologies. I did not see it before. We have our tartlet this evening. We have A5 Wagyu Tartar here for you. And A5 then Wagyu Tartar. Okay. A braised parsnip, both topped with a horseradish and parsnip cream uh, coming from the farm this evening. Those parsnips. And then the bowl to the right is Takenoko with a dashi broth and fresh mint oil, Imperial Saikyo Miso grilled across the top for you. Saikyo Miso. Okay. In the center we have Pacific Bluefin Tuna coming from Baja, California tonight with uh -huh. our first apricot of the summer uh, tare uh -huh. glaze along the bottom and an Ohitashi ruby beet from the farm. Uh -huh. Next to that is Yagara, red cornet fish with red plum pocho and fresh zucchini ribbons, the first summer squashes to start popping up on the farm as well. Next to that, Sawara, lightly grilled and chilled down in a seasoned dashi broth with Japanese chives and yoga, a bone miso yoga. sauce at the bottom of the plate. So just taking the bones of that fish, roasted it down with some aromatics for some rich umami flavor. The black square is goma dofu, using black sesame seeds with fresh wasabi grated along the top, and then ponzu, aged over the lease of Chardonnay from Lyoko, our neighbor is just two blocks down in town here. Uh -huh. And our final bite this evening, right in the center, looking like flower petals are Chelsea Gem oysters coming from Hog Island Oyster Company. Our uh, neighbors just a few miles yep. west of us here Smallest. on the coast yep. with a secure blossom vinaigrette and salted blossom to top it off there for you. Thank you, Jesse. One question. Um, I, I've noticed a lot of time recently people just say tare. Is, is that kind of now well known? Like it, it's kind of a common like, yeah, you know, tare, of course. Or, or is it still kind of finding its um, foothold in, in the vocabulary of... We find here uh, at Sumo, but it is becoming definitely a more common uh, word. We find a lot of guests do know that it is a kind of a, gla a soy-based glaze, uh -huh. if you uh -huh. will. Uh, we do add lots of other flavors to our, our various tari, so we will kind of clarify that when we are mentioning it. But it's definitely a lot of uh, the Japanese terminology is becoming more prevalent here in wow. California, which is really exciting for us uh, as we definitely consider ourselves to be a little bit of educators of the kaiseki yeah. style of cuisine. We don't consider ourselves to be a true kaiseki restaurant, but yeah. very, very loosely based around that style, really trying to pay homage to the Hokkaido ingredients uh, since Chef and Katina spent several years living and learning there. Uh -huh. uh, so really exciting to share our, our knowledge with uh, our, no, our I... guests who aren't as familiar with the Japanese terms of things, but definitely starting to see it becoming more mainstream here in, uh, the, in California. Well, we're really excited and we feel the, uh, the craftsmanship love and the, uh, perf uh, the striving to innovate and be creative. So that's what it's all about. Thank you, Jesse. Looking forward to it. You're welcome. I'll leave you to enjoy here, and Maria will be over in just a moment to say hello. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Tempura, which is of uh, artichoke coming from the farm. This is topped with a blend of Siberian sturgeon caviar and crepe fresh. Just next to it, malted potato, which is using maltodextrin to break down the sugar compounds of potato to make it into a liquid, and then we aerate it with a few goodies along the way. Over the top, you have a charred aluminum powder. At the bottom, fava beans that finish the dish up. Fava beans. Wait, you, you said over here, um, 
So this is sturgeon caviar on top, right? Yeah, and then you have the creme fraiche below and then a tempura of artichoke to go along with it. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. This in here. This is coming from the heart, so these items being grilled. This right here, a medley of mushrooms. Uh, you have shiitake mushroom morel, and then right over here you have roulette cut, uh, masami ranch uh, beef. Masami ranch beef. So our masami, this is a new uh, farm we're working with uh, up in Corning, California, so really uh -huh. like bordering bordering uh, California and Oregon. Uh -huh. And this is a post steer cattle. So what they do is instead of harvesting cows in like their younger stage, they let them mature a little more while they're still producing calves. Uh -huh. And then afterwards, it leads to uh, a really like more mature flavor profile. So I really see. nice texture. This is a, a blend of the, of the A5 wagyu you can find in Japan. Uh -huh. with Black Angus. Okay, so it's, it's a crossbreed of A5 wagyu and Black Angus. Correct. I see. And so how, how do you, you grill it on a, you grilled it? We, we grill it almost like a tataki, so mm -hmm. like quickly seared. Uh -huh. uh, and then it is accompanied with a little bit of a spring onions from the farm. These are gold koi spring onions. And, and you said this is what? So instead of the beef, you'll still have the same onion, but you have uh, morels coming from up north along with shiitake mushrooms also both grilled. What, mor what mora? Is, what is what's mor what's morel? Morel is a, it's a spring uh, mushroom. Uh -huh. and right now this one's cut in half, but you can imagine it just kind of almost looking like a wrinkly egg. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's so, kind of the oval shape. I see. So morel and uh, shiitake. Shiitake okay. and then the same uh, spring uh, onions inside. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So, you have a sashimi of kampachi this evening, or amberjack coming from Tokyo tonight with uh -huh. the first stone oh. fruit, the first apricots of the summer. And again, seeing the first signs of summer, even though we're a little bit in spring, it's been uh, you have fresh and poached pieces making up those rosette swirls in the center. And then sea lettuce and ice plant leaves with gyokuro green tea leaves. It's a, a style of green tea. So we've steeped the gyokuro and it sits at the very bottom of the shima aji underneath. Uh -huh. And then you have dipping dots across the top of gyokuro green green tea as well as the poaching liquid from the apricots itself. So just apricot juice, some tamari and mirin in there. I see. So so you said kampachi but then you said another fish. Uh, Kampachi Aji, is the, uh, Shima. Or sorry, kampachi is the only fish there and then you just had the apricots tonight. Oh, okay. Yes. Wonderful. And and okay, got it. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. So uh, taking you to the coast of Hokkaido, Japan, we are celebrating their hairy crab season. Hairy crab. But alongside hairy crab, this just will reflect what we're currently having an abundance of at the farm, which is the Rasko family. So in these small bowls in front of you, right in here, this bowl consists of a crab and grilled cabbage salad surmounted by a salad mousse dressed in a cabbage sauce, and a shrimp and nori crumble there on the side, and a hairy crab leg. Then back to this larger bowl. This bowl consists of a couple of smaller bites consisting of a cauliflower bajois with a kadidashi gelée all over a nori chip, finished with a little bit of some Romanesco and blood orange there on mm -hmm. top as well. Wonderful. So, so you said this is this is so you have the hairy crab on top, and then what, what is this uh, the the white? So that's going to be a cabbage sauce. And then cabbage sauce. Uh huh. And then underneath that um, crab leg, you'll have the crab and grilled cabbage salad, and then underneath that will be the little scallop. Piece. Oh, scallop! Is that Hokkaido also? Um, I what, 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 and what is this? You, you said this was grilled cabbage? No, so that is going to be um, the grilled cabbage will be with the, the little um, crab salad underneath, uh -huh. and that's going to be a nori crumble. A uh, nori, uh, nori crumble. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yeah, these are a little heavy things, but. All right, what do we have here? Wonderful. So this course right in here oh, is inspired. Can you speak a little louder? Yeah. Yeah. Right here. yeah. So this course is inspired by the Takumase course in Kaiseki cuisine that always includes an assortment of fresh local vegetables that were down in Dashi. Uh -huh. Our version highlights what we're currently growing at the farm. So you'll find some blanched peas in here, blanched sauces, alongside some wild mushrooms and turnips throughout the dish as well. A couple different sauces you'll have on the plate will consist of a pea miso puree with an umeboshi and an herbs puree as well. And I have one warm element right in here that will consist of this tempura agé roll with those wild mushrooms inside in a Japanese Tempura agé roll <laughs> with mild, wild mushrooms, okay? Yeah, and uh, Japanese cocoa sweet potato. 
And then, firstly, I like to start the dish out by working my way from the bottom up to the top. Okay. Almost as if I'm walking through a little garden following that sauce trail. So everything here, or all the vegetables here are from the the garden, huh? Yeah, so um, this dish is uh, really representing what we're currently growing up upon, so it really is embracing that spring season. Um, so elements of this dish will change um, regularly, by week by week, depending on what we get from the farm in the morning. Uh -huh. Wonderful. It's also inspired, Chef Carl used to work at, um, under Michelle Braz in Hokkaido, Japan, uh -huh. uh, where he worked at the Gargoyu station and created a dish just like this. And him and Michelle Braz used to walk around the garden um, and pick fresh vegetables from that day to create this dish. Awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you. So with all those beautiful sauces on the plate, these are a couple of warm souffle buns with a mushroom miso butter inside. It can help you clean up the rest of your plate when you're done. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Wow. All right. So in this donabe, we have a broth of aka amadai. Aka amadai. Uh -huh. This is a Thai old fish that we commonly use in our cuisine as well. Uh, it's one of the few in the world that we can leave the scales on. So I'll start with the filet within the bowl. Okay. Uh, that has a little blend of the scales over the top where the kitchen has sautéed the filet and then ran hot oil continuously over it. The filet starts to... Oh, you're talking up. about this guy here. Yeah, so with the scales, the flakes, or the oil starts to help them flake up and it creates this chicharron-like texture that goes with the dish. Uh -huh. And then we've used the bones of the fish to also incorporate into this broth. Uh -huh. The broth has an incorporation of Meyer lemon and chive that finish it off. Uh -huh. And to go along with that, back to the bowl, you have a blend of spring ingredients. So firstly, uh, first off, fava beans. There's also broccolini incorporated into that as well. Fava beans and broccolini. Yeah. The fava bean is the, the little uh, down yeah, here? on the bottom there. Uh -huh. And then to go along with that, you have sesame. So this sesame is the first time we've grown it at the farm. We've tried over six years to grow it, but it's not pulled out the yield, but Victina has continuously went at it, making a little adjustments year by year. And finally this year we had a strong enough growth to incorporate it into a daily meal. Awesome. It's also finished with a mochi. So you have the mochi inside with the sesame wrapped on the outside for a bit of texture as well. Uh -huh. Feel free to pick this one up again to enjoy the broth. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. What an honor to have you here. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us this evening. My name is Daniel. It's a privilege to be here, Daniel. Thank well, you. I was reading your notes and uh, I saw that you're spending the summer with us in in, yep. in California. Yep, yes. that's right. Excellent. Thank you so much. This is our green strawberry intermezzo. We wanted to refresh your palate and reset after the aka amadai. Aka amadai. At the base of your bowl, a matcha cream. There is as well an amaranth nori crumble. Green strawberry sorbet, chewy green strawberries and fresh green strawberries with an olive oil jam, and as well a granita of chervil and tarragon. The bowl is a ceramic from Shigayaki. Shigayaki. And I'll uh, leave you to enjoy your intermezzo. Thank you very much. Asparagus. Uh, asparagus. asparagus. Yeah. These green asparagus are coming from our farm, um, and then the Belgian white asparagus are coming from a local farmer here in the region. Um, along with that is Bloomsdale spinach, as well as Miner's lettuce and wild uh, ramps. And then the two wait, wild ramps. Where? Which one is that? Ramp is that is the one that's closest to you right here. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. Um, and so the two uh, protein preparations, you have the Duclair duck breast, raised by our friends at Wallace Family Farms over in Valley Ford, California. Uh -huh. That is an incredibly special relationship that we have with these group of farmers. They raise them just for us here at Single Thread. So no nice. other restaurant in the world gets to serve this done. Nice. And then you have the King Medai, or Golden Eye Snapper. Um, it's a fish that uh, is really, really prized in Japanese cuisine. And in fact, they uh, don't export it outside of the Tokyo fish market very often. So you see it a lot around Tokyo, but you you don't see it very regularly in the United States. So it's pretty uh, pretty amazing that we have the opportunity to uh, to serve this here. So enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Japanese kaiseki cuisine. Yep. This is braised anago. Braised anago. Yeah. In a tari sauce and accompanied with a little shaved egg yolk and goma. Egg yolk and goma. Okay. Yes. 
and we saved some of the braising liquid to create the hot broth, which I love just sipping on as a savory tea. On so side. over here, yep. And fine, and it's been seasoned with a little bit of ginger ale <coughs> as well. Uh huh. And ending with the pickled element, there are two types of pickled carrots with pickled burdock root in the center, all dressed in Atari sauce and accompanied with goma on the back. So you have carrot, burdock root. And yes. then gobo, and then what's this at the end? That is a different type of carrot. It was um, compressed in LSK bin to where uh -huh. it's a, it has like a nice chewy texture to it. I see. So just a different iteration of the carrot. Right? Yeah. So this, so this broth, do you pour it on here? I like to keep them separately and just sip on the broth as a oh. or as a tea. Okay. Uh huh. In between bites of the on the go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, so when. Your guests come and they say, what is Anago? What is your explanation? Saltwater eel coming from southern Japan. Okay. And some, most are very open to it, but we do have some that are like... <laughs> yeah. So the other word is conger eel, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. So unagi is the freshwater eel. Yes. And Anago is this uh, saltwater one. Yes. Um, but, okay, great. So southern half of Japan, that's where it usually comes from, so... Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. This is a very exciting course here. The first night of this dessert here for you this evening. Oh. Celebrating the first time we've grown rhubarb on the farm. Rhubarb. Be spring here without the rhubarb in full swing. It's full pink and tartness here for you. On uh, the top of the bowl there, you have a rhubarb sorbet underneath that uh, sugar wheel moon shape there with shaved green almonds across the top. Underneath, you'll find a Japanese-style cheesecake using bellwether ricotta cheese, a local cheesemaker here. And at the very base of the bowl is a candied almond crumb with a uh, boot royal uh, cheese layer as well there. So two cheese layers of cheese mousse and a che uh, cheesecake layer in the center there with notes of poached rhubarb along the bottom as well for you. Poached in jasmine tea this evening. We made it to the end? You've made a one more to go after this. Oh. <laughs> Almost there, yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so close tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Jeannie. All right. Wagashi bites, huh? A All right. tea of lemon peel, chamomile, and ginger for you to sip on with the final wagashi here. Okay. The lower level has three bites. Up front, we have what looks like a Ritz cracker. That is a cornmeal sable cookie with dill and pink peppercorn between the layers of a local crescenza cheese as well for a bit of savory notes. Next to that, the striped rectangle is a chocolate and miso offer cake with kanako butter between the layers. Uh -huh. And then we have a oh, nougat you. with pistachio, fresh and dried cherry and some arare crumbs around the outside. Uh -huh. Up top in the front, we have the nest with a vanilla egg shell and a huckleberry juice filling and then our mochi on the plates here for you with a pineapple sage and guava pat de flea in the center tonight. Uh -huh. I will warn you with that egg to do it in one bite only. Mm -hmm. Pop it in your mouth and then bite down otherwise we may have a small sticky mess oh. on our hands here tonight. All right, we survived. You've well, done no, it. we thrived. You thrived. Th thanks <laughs> yes, to you guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeannie. You're very welcome. All right. Gotsosama deshita.